Jase is stance. A good jase is the most fundamental element for martial arts training. In Hapkido, there are basically two types of fighting stances, left stance and right stance. Each stance has two different ways of positioning the arms. This is called jaw jase or left stance. Move back your right foot and raise both arms for guarding the middle section. Then come back to pyung jase or natural stance. Move your left foot to the rear and make wu jase or right stance. This is called ja kungang jase or left diamond stance. Guard the facial section with your right forearm and the low section with your left forearm. This is Wu Kumgang Jase or right diamond stance. Guard the facial section with your left forearm and the lower section with the right forearm. This is Paljan Ging Jase or cross arm stance. Bring your arms in front of your chest and cross them in a natural stance. Danjun means the center of the energy field. Hohop means breathing. You must keep your hands full of energy to generate power. As water flows downward, the energy flows the same. You might think the tips of the fingers are the ends of the energy flow, but the energy that is invisible continues to flow beyond the tips. So keep your hands wide open for vital energy and dynamic power. Hello.
For the intermediate level of breathing, you can consciously bring the energy to the dungeon, compress it, and explode it through your hands or feet in all different directions. There are three types of advanced breathing exercises. This is Hohop Jungja Bup, or sitting breathing method. Breathe quietly in meditating position. The second is Hohop Dong Bup or dynamic breathing. Raise your body and hands while inhaling. Compress it internally toward the Danjun and come back to the original position. The third is Hohop Baliopop or power breathing. Raise your body and hands while inhaling. Compress it internally toward the Danjun and push upward and explode the energy. Kwanjanori, or temple, is located between the ear and the eye. You can strike it with the thumb knuckle or back fist according to your position. Indang, or front nerve, is located between the eyebrows. You can strike it with your palm heel. Inyang, or the tip of the mandible, is located under the chin. You can press it upward with the tip of your thumb. Dayung, or the middle of the mandible, is located on the side of the chin. You can push it with the knuckle of the index finger. Chunyong, or the mandible joint, is located under the ear. Chundal, or the suprasternal notch, is located in the middle of the neck. You can push it with the tip of your middle finger. Kyunjung, or the clavicle notch, is located on the collarbone. Myung-chi, or solar plexus, is located right below the xiphoid process. You can strike it with the tips of your fingers or the tip of the middle finger. Susamni, or upper forearm vital point, is located at the top of the forearm. Chuktek, or interior elbow joint, is located in the middle of the inside elbow. Sohe, or interior lower brachialis, is located under the inside elbow. Negan, or interior wrist, is located three fingers width above the wrist line. Hapkok, or the first metacarpal notch, is located between the thumb and index fingers. Weijung, or the posterior knee joint, is located in the middle of the rear of the knee. Sungsan, or middle of the calf, is located at the center of the calf. Nupjuk Darikupso, or the exterior thigh, is located at the end of the middle finger on the side of your leg when you stand up. There are many vital targets on the human body, 
Most common vital targets in martial arts practice are those areas with strong vital energy channels. They are mostly on the center line of the body. An interesting thing about vital targets is that every vital target is protected by the neighboring parts of the body. For example, indang is protected by the projections of the frontal bone. The frontal bone and nose bone protect the top of the nose vital point. The lip and nose bone protect the injung, the vital point on the top of the upper lip. The vital point on the chin is protected by the lip and chin bone. The neck is protected by the chin and collar bone. The most vulnerable parts of the trunk are well protected by the arms. There are many fatal targets under the arm. Since the center line of the human body is covered with vital areas, strike on those areas can cause fatal impact. However, if you strike again at the opposite side of the first impact, it can relieve the damage. In other words, the first strike is for killing, the second for resuscitating. That is why after brutal injuries from multiple blows in a fight, you can survive. Energy circulates from the dungeon clockwise upward to the heart, spreading all over the body. So, if you strike to the solar plexus while the energy is circulating, it stops the flow. When the flow stops, life ends. If you strike the front and back at the same time, it might stop the flow completely, which causes death. The frontal targets carry yang energy and the rear yin energy. When you strike the yin and yang at the same time, the flow stops. Against a wrist grab, twist your wrist downward out of the grip. Then, strike the solar plexus with your elbow, followed by a back fist strike to the in jung, or the anterior nasal spine. When you take the wrist out, for easy escape, twist it toward the thumb and pull toward you. <coughs> Against a wrist grab, Twist your wrist downward out of the grip and strike the diaphragm with your knife hand. Against a wrist grab, twist your wrist downward out of the grip and strike the neck with your knife hand. Against a wrist grab, twist your wrist downward out of the grip and strike the temple with your back fist. <coughs> Against a wrist grab, raise your arm and hit the rib cage with a lateral elbow strike. <coughs> Against a wrist grab, grab his collar and twist your wrist and get out of the grip and attack his chin with an upper elbow strike. Against a wrist grab, step in and turn your body, twisting the wrist and escaping from the grip. Then do an elbow strike to the ribcage. <coughs> Against a wrist grip, raise and pull his arm, then kick his thigh with your heel. Against a wrist grab, step in and turn your body. Do a heel kick to the chest. Uh, 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 uh. 
against a wrist grab, step in and strike his wrist to get your wrist out of the grip. Turn your body and do a rear elbow strike to the solar plexus and back fist to the in jung, the anterior nasal spine. You must develop your eyesight speed. With good eye speed, your hand can function with proper technique and timing. So you must have a special practice for eye-hand coordination. This block sequence is designed for that purpose. Against punching techniques, you do high blocks, inside blocks, low blocks a two-arm raising block, and a downward block. One, two, 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 one, When you practice alone, always practice imagining your opponent attacking from right in front of you. Kurugi technique is the most fundamental falling technique in Hapkido. It helps you develop a special balance in motion. First, position the tip of your hand inward and touch the blade of the hand on the ground. You should tuck in the chin. Make your body round and roll. Slap the floor with the other hand to disperse the impact. Jungbang Nakbuk is used when the opponent pushes you from behind. First, jump as high as you can and spread your arms and legs as you land, touching the ground with the arms first, then the feet. Do not touch the ground with your trunk or knees. Once you are in the air, keep your body horizontally parallel to the ground and position your arms in a diamond shape in front of you. When the hands and forearms touch the ground, your feet get wide open and touch the ground and disperse the impact.
Hubang Nakbuk is used when the opponent pushes you from the front. You are using both arms to land safely on the floor. When your body soars, raise your two feet high in the air. When you land, touch the ground with your hands and forearms. You should tuck in your chin to prevent head injury. Chukbang Nakbuk is to protect yourself by falling laterally, either on the ground or in the air. At this time, you must concentrate your energy in the dungeon to integrate the entire body as one unit. First, raise your body as high as you can in the air and center yourself. Look at the spot where you are falling to. Touch the ground first with the closer hand and forearm, then shoulder, upper body, hip and leg in sequence. Kong Jung Hui Jun is an advanced falling technique. You throw the entire body into the air and spin 270 degrees, then land on the ground safely. Your front foot pushes your body explosively into the air, making a large circle with the head as the center. Then, after spinning 270 degrees, your rear foot touches on the ground. Your hand, feet, leg and upper body touch the ground in sequence. You must perform this technique with full confidence. <laughs> Wuljang is a technique for jumping over a high obstacle. First, jump explosively using your two feet, go up as high as you can, land with both hands touching the ground and roll your body smoothly up. 
When your body is in the air, relax your mind and body to loosen your muscles. You must look at the falling spot before landing. Your hands, shoulder, upper body and legs land in sequence. Do not touch your head on the ground when landing. Moli Gurugi is a multiple obstacle jumping technique. The secret for distance jumping is in the efficient usage of the key energy. The key must be compressed and released at the right time and right distance. You should look as far as you can for practical landing while keeping your body angle for comfortable flying. The goal of this raising kick is to improve the flexibility of the leg muscles for high kicks. First, relax your shoulders and focus your energy to the danjun and raise your foot over your shoulder. The purpose of the inside crescent kick is to kick the face from outside to inside. From fighting stance, stretch your leg and whip the face out to in using the elastic force of the body torque. Outside crescent kick is a circular whipping kick to the face from inside to outside. From fighting stance, stretch your leg and whip the face in to out using the elastic force of the body torque. Side kick is to push or strike the lateral opponent using the foot blade.
This particular technique is done by turning the body toward the opponent in the front. The goal of the foot snap kick is to do a surprise attack to the lower part of the opponent. This technique is for kicking upward to the groin section. This technique is designed for kicking the opponent's shin with your instep. First, turn your instep outward 45 degrees, then push the target area using your body weight by slightly leaning backward. The purpose of this technique is to kick to the rear ankle deceptively using your lower leg. Kicking takes place from in to out. The target is the rear ankle and weapons are your shin, ball or back of your foot. This technique is to kick the lower limb of the opponent with your foot blade. First, lower your stance slightly and kick from outside to the inside toward the opponent's ankle or shin. The low side kick is to strike the kneecap or shin using the foot blade. Bend the standing knee for maximum balance and enhanced power. The goal of this technique is to attack the rear or side of the opponent's lower leg using your heel. Since this technique is for close combat, you need to bend the kicking knee tightly. This technique is to block the opponent's kicking leg from inside to outside clockwise. You can use the outside of your leg or foot blade for contact. This technique is done in the manner that you are cutting the opponent's body in half using the foot blade. Keep your body upright when you raise your leg. Lean the upper body backward when you kick. This technique is to slap the face with the bottom of your foot. 
First, bring your knee up bending, then snap the foot from outside to inside to the face. This technique is for kicking the opponent's collarbone or face with your heel. This technique has fatally destructive power, so you must be careful in the usage. This technique is to kick upward along the central line of the opponent's body with the foot blade. Pull your toe toward you. Expose the foot blade as much as possible. This technique is to use a side kick to attack the face or neck. First, turn your body and bring the knee toward the center, and snap the foot to the target forcefully. This is a fast and powerful technique that uses the torque and elastic force to strike the target. The power comes from the muscle twist and the timing of the final execution. This technique is to attack the face of the opponent with your heel. This is a surprise kicking method that travels from outside to inside, then from inside to outside. This is a side kick that is done after a 180 degree rear turn. This is used for a surprise attack or counter attack. You must monitor the opponent's movement over your shoulder when you turn back. This technique is also used for a surprise attack toward the opponent in the rear. It must be done quickly and you need to adjust the target distance by instinctive jumping. You must monitor the opponent's movement over your shoulder when you turn back for precision. This technique is used for warming up exercises or offensive and defensive technique for close combat. Bring your knee as high as you can and project it forward as far as you can.
This technique is to distract the opponent's attention by kicking the low section and then attacking the face. When you kick the low section, make it short and quick. For the high kick, make it long and powerful. This technique is to distract the opponent's attention by kicking the low section and then attacking the trunk or face with a side kick. For the side kick, turn your body entirely to the side and thrust deeply into the opponent's body. This technique is to attack the opponent in the front with a low kick, then to the trunk or face of the opponent to the side with a side kick. For this technique, you must combine a good sense of balance with power control. This technique is to kick the low section in the front and then attacking the trunk or face with a side kick to the rear opponent. For this combination, you must center yourself at all times so that you don't overextend your leg. This technique is to attack the face from the outside with an inside crescent kick. Outside crescent kick is a circular whipping kick to the face from inside to outside. This technique must be done quickly without hesitation. This technique is to attack the face from the outside with an inside crescent kick and the trunk or face with a side kick. In fighting, you need to be careful with the distance control between the kicks. This technique is to block the kicking leg from inside to outside and attack the face with a roundhouse kick. 
The challenge of this technique is in timing the beat between the first and second technique. This technique is to attack the leg with your heel quickly and shortly, then the low front section with a foot snap kick. This technique is to unbalance the opponent by kicking the ankle with the blade of your foot, then attack the face with a heel kick. You must maintain good balance and control the distance at all times. This technique is to attack the middle or high section of the opponent and then kick the trunk or face with a roundhouse kick. In fighting, this type of combination must be used confidently and swiftly. This technique is to attack the opponent from both outside directions consecutively with roundhouse kicks. This technique is powerful and easy to use, so it is a popular combination in competition and street fight. This is an advanced kicking skill to attack the low section with a foot snap kick and the face with a roundhouse kick in the air. This technique must be done as a surprise attack and you should execute it confidently. This technique is to penetrate the opponent's defense by a powerful roundhouse kick and then knock him out with a spinning heel kick. The power of this technique comes from the elastic torque of your muscles and posture, so you must stretch daily for ultimate flexibility.
This technique is to attack to the right and left directions consecutively. The first kick is a transitory attack, so you need to have strong leg muscles and spatial balance. This is an advanced technique to attack the opponent in the front deceptively and quickly with your foot snap kick and then to the rear with a jump side kick as the first foot lands on the ground. This technique is a very powerful movement that has three important elements. The first is the kinetic force that comes from the synchronization of the entire body. The second is the explosive power that flows from the compressed energy in Danjun. The third is the elastic force that comes from the muscle torque and flexibility. When these three factors are well combined, this technique is deadly. This technique utilizes accelerated force of the moving body. Jump slightly and let the body spin, and then let it whip the target with explosive power. When you jump, release the compressed energy from the dungeon through your leg. Keep your torso as upright as possible. This is a deceptive attack to the lower leg, followed by a low spinning kick to knock down the opponent. This technique must be done quickly without hesitation. Don't forget to protect your face at all times. This is an advanced jump kick that requires a total integration of your physical and mental ability. In the air, you must integrate your energy into the danjun and free your feet. Put your knees and feet together. After kicking, release your energy for safe landing. This technique is to attack the lower leg with a roundhouse kick and the opposite side with a spinning heel kick. If you kick with your right leg, lean your body toward the left and put both hands on the ground for balance. When you turn, spot the target quickly over your shoulder. This kick is to hit the target with a two-foot front kick in the air. Maximize the amount of elastic force of your ankle and stomach muscles for a high jump. Once you are in the air, deliver the compressed energy from the danjun to the target.
This kick is to hit the target with a two-foot split front kick in the air. Squat, raise your arms, jump, raise your feet into the air, bring your arms down, kick, and land. In the air, you should erect your torso and free your feet. This technique is to kick two targets at opposite sides with split kicks. For balance and longer flying time, you should lean your body to the opposite direction of the first kick. This technique is to strike the high, middle, and low section targets consecutively with spinning heel kicks. For power and precision, lower your balance, readjust moving distance, and spot the target quickly. This is an advanced kicking technique to knock down the opponent by throwing your entire body onto his chest. Jump, bring both feet together, and stomp on the target. <laughs> This is a combination of hooking and kicking techniques that is geared to confuse and surprise the opponent. The primary goal of this technique is to demonstrate strategical, psychological, and technical superiority of your skills. This is a knockdown technique done by hooking the front leg and kicking the upper body. This technique may not work against runners, so you need to have excellent distance control and timing. This is a surprise maneuver to hook the opponent's front leg and take him down. First, slide in, hook his ankle with your rear foot, and kick his calf with your front foot simultaneously and keep twisting and rolling your body. For a successful result, move in with a continuous flow without hesitation. This technique is a right-left, right-kick combination that requires ultimate coordination in the air. Danjun breathing can enhance the ability to control the power in this arrow-kick combination. This combination is three spinning heel kicks to the high, middle, and low sections, and one jump turn roundhouse kick to the over the head target. You can maximize power by accelerating the centrifugal force 
and stabilize your body by increasing the centripetal force and adjusting the arms and the angle of the axle of the torso. This technique is a combination of fundamental skills and applications of Hapkido. It is the ultimate level of personal development. Therefore, this is one of the most popular techniques in the public performance.